All right, so welcome to this tutorial. As you can see, I love to listen to some Sophie Tucker <laughs> as I get into painting. Um, really, really good beats, some beats to that. That really gets me pumping. I am going to demonstrate how I do a 30 minute study of the artist Glenn Dean. Now, my personal challenge was that I wanted to practice figures more. I don't paint figures a lot um, and that is something that I want to overcome. I kind of have a fear of them because I don't paint them enough. So therefore you have to just do a deep dive into it, right? I still think I could do a lot more, but to maximize my time, I am specifically letting myself try to capture the gesture in 30 minutes or less. And therefore in this tutorial, in this painting, I am not trying to focus on detail or anything. I just wanna make sure that I get the gesture of the figures and of the landscape. And I'm happy with that as long as my colors and even more so my values are correct. So as you can see here, I started with a tone canvas as I always do. And right away, I'm starting with the block in. Now, you can see my whole uh, Photoshop setup. It's pretty simple. I have tool presets that I use. And the brush that I love to use the block in, I just have really weird names for brushes, so I'm not even going to say it. But it essentially imitates a flat brush, like how I do in uh, gouache painting. So it's a big sort of flat brush where I can get really nice big graphic shapes and this allows me to focus again on the big shapes. I know I say this a lot in my tutorials but I cannot stress how important that is. It allows me to focus on the big shapes not to get caught up in detail so that I can really focus on the light and shadow shapes. Now you can see that I'm always zooming in and out to see if my um, my figures are reading to see the light, the values are working. Value is the most important thing. I don't really worry about color shifts and color temperature shifts until later on when I have my composition nailed down and my light and dark shapes more or less in the correct places. Now with this painting, I actually really struggled with the whole composition. I don't know why I kept painting the figures too close to the edge. I made them too big. I usually have this problem when I'm doing planar paintings and sometimes studies, which is, you know, something I need to work on. I need to just work on, I think, planning initially more, uh, planning better initially in the beginning, which will probably save me time in the, in the later run, in the long run later. So that's something you can learn from me, you know, maybe have a more, a better planning structure. I think I always draw my figures too big. So that's something about composition and planning, you know, having the angle right, having the proportions right, you know, not having your, your horse too big, your figure too big, you know, having them where they are located in the composition. So this, of course, is sped up. The original painting took 30 minutes, but I sped it up to eight minutes. Now I am going to have a longer version of this tutorial on MFA, which is a platform that stands for Made for Artists. And for those of you who don't know, this was started by Kwong Ho. He's an amazing artist, um, probably one of the top well-known uh, contemporary artists now. And he started it with a good friend of his named, named Foster. And basically this platform is kind of like a Patreon where he invited all these talented artists from all around the world, such as his wife, Adriana Stein, um, and Ron Hicks, Scott Christensen, and a ton of other people. And I'm so glad to be a part of this platform. So I will be releasing tutorials on that as well. So like I said, I will have a longer version of this tutorial on MFA where I will go more into color, how I um, think about my colors as I block in, the kind of philosophy behind the colors I choose, uh, and more of that. So if you want to get more of a taste of that, subscribe to MFA and you will get access to a plethora of videos from amazing artists from all around the world. So I definitely highly recommend it. Now what I like to tell my students and my mentorships is that a good painting is composed of well-designed, well-thought-out shapes. Now, because this is a gesture, I will say probably not all my shapes are thought out to a T, but as long as the readability is there, that is mainly what I care about. You want to have readability in a painting, whether you're doing a study, a painting from your own mind, your own illustration. If a painting is not readable, the viewer will, they will lose their interest very quickly, I believe personally, and hopefully some other people will agree with me. So even if there's not a lot of detail, you know, as long as the gesture and the readability are there, I think that is important. And so with this, I am trying to uh, not break the unity, uh, the overall bigness of my whole design or blending design, I should say, because I'm not you know, making this up on my own. Uh, this is a quote that Edgar Payne says. He says, even if you add 
detail and by detail I think maybe in this case I'm referring more to smaller shapes to break up bigger shapes that sort of imply detail but it's not actually detail like I'm not actually going in and rendering the skirt you know rendering the grass and I would say Glendine is not really doing that either he is really good at you know capturing those bigger shapes and really creating a beautiful painting with honestly really beautiful color compliments like I learned so much from color just from doing his studies even though I was trying to focus on figure I was also learning so much about color I was like wow and you know things that I thought were like I thought it was this color it turned out to be something else when I checked in color picked it so that was really eye-opening as well but going back to what Edgar Payne said about not destroying the overall unity and bigness of the design that is a problem that I see with students a lot of the time where they start to just sort of hone in on one area of the painting and they forget to sort of bring the whole painting up as a whole and then as a result the, the, the whole painting kind of falls apart because you don't have that unity so it's really important to be able to um, critique and look at your painting as a whole are all the values adjusted accordingly in all parts of the painting not just one part of the painting not just half of the painting all the values have to work as a whole for in order for the painting to work As you can see right now I'm adjusting you know the placement of the characters like I said I couldn't seem to get that right I am largely simplifying the back of the clouds or sorry the back clouds into light and shadow I know there's a lot more color nuances in the clouds you know I see some really subtle neutral grays peeking through along with those um, nice richer more saturated blues in the shadow but I chose to simplify it pretty much to um, uh, a, a shadow shape of more of a blue and a light shape of more of an off-white um, because I'm not really trying to my color is secondary in this study I really just want to show you guys how I approach capturing a loose gestural study if I really wanted to I could go ham with the color I could push my own color that would probably take me another 30 minutes maybe not too long so it depends on what you want to get out of the study. Now that's another really important thing I want to talk about. A lot of people, they do a study and they want to focus on everything. I think it's important that when you do a study, you are asking yourself, okay, what is it that I want to get out of the study? Is it that I want to focus on color? Do you want to focus on composition? Do you want to focus on mark making? Narrowing down and really choosing and asking yourself actively, what is it you want to focus on will really help you in the long run and the short run when you're doing your painting, having a goal. And it can be really specific and the more specific, the better actually. So that would be my hot tip for you guys. In this case, it's studying figures. So you can see here is a final more or less painting. I stopped. I didn't work on it after 30 minutes. There's probably a ton more I could do, but you know what? I'm happy with that I got in 30 minutes and that's my goal. You can see it's very loose. I'm happy with the way the figures are reading more or less, no detail whatsoever, but there you have it. That is my 30 minute gestural study of blending. Please follow me on my Instagram, my Gumroad, my YouTube, as I, this will be on YouTube. And I am also having mentorships for 2021 and applications are open now. For those of you who don't know about my painting mentorships, I have digital painting mentorships and gouache painting mentorships. And I had a really successful run this year in 2020. I mentored over 20 students in gouache and digital painting and it was uh, so fun. I got students from all around the world, from Japan, Malaysia, all parts of Europe, from Canada, from the East Coast in the States. I'm personally from San Diego. So uh, I decided to just keep this going. I love teaching. Teaching is one of my passions. So if you are interested in learning and getting a one-on-one -on -one eight-week mentorship with me where I create a customized plan just for you and I work with you, then go to my website at www.tiffanymang.com. Click on Mentorships 2021. Um, there will be a sub point for uh, digital. Um, you can on the a menu, you can click on digital or gouache mentorships, read about it. And if you think it's for you, go ahead and put your name on the list to get more information. And yeah, I hope that I will be hearing from some of you guys. So thank you so much for watching this tutorial and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.